So there's motherboards and there's motherboards. This over here, I think is probably the mother of all motherboards because it's on another level. It's, it's something different, okay? Because this doesn't just house the normal CPUs, but the not normal CPUs. They're Ryzen Threadripper Pro CPUs. We've actually done a build with this motherboard and this is not new, but I still thought we're gonna take a look at this because this is so different from any of the other mainstream motherboards out there. And this really, I'd say, is a server motherboard. Let's take a look. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So this guy is called the Asus Pro WS WRX 80E Sage SE Wi-Fi. Boom. Okay. Um, there's a lot of things going on and this supports the Ryzen Threadripper Pro series CPUs. This is now Threadripper Pro 5000 series as well. But these are DDR4 slots, so most likely when the Threadripper Pro 7000 or something like that comes out and we have DDR5, then we're going to have a new motherboard. But this is what houses the third and fifth gen Threadripper Pro CPUs there. Let's take a look inside because how often do you unbox server motherboards? It says Innovation Awards 2021 honoree. Okay, so it didn't win it. Okay, is the motherboard at first. Oh my word, that's heavy. Let me just, ooh. Leave that on the side. Then we've got instruction manuals, some more literature, DVD drive for your drivers and stuff. Then we've got all sorts of cables and accessories and things. First of all, we've got this here, which is something you don't see in a normal motherboard. This is a VGA header and you're thinking, what are we from 1990? Well, basically you'll see in a moment, the motherboard has um, a VGA port on the motherboard and you can put this as a PCIe expansion in the back of the case to actually get VGA output for the um, BMC, which basically means that you've got a computer that's running this motherboard, okay? You've got BIOS and then you've got another server, basically, that's running all of these hardware there. So if you go to BIOS, you can't actually see the likes of your fan curves for your fans or anything like that, because this is all controlled on the server side of things. You need another computer to access this computer through the server, through the IP address. So this is different, right? Through the IP address, through the LAN port on the back, if that's connected to your internet or your, you know, Wi-Fi router, then you can access it uh, wirelessly as well on another laptop or something like that. And there you can see all the like CPU things and fan curves and like CPU tuning and things like that. But then there's also this part here, which gives you access to directly see some of the things what's going on in the server by just connecting to this and you can basically connect it in the back of the motherboard. I don't claim myself to be a pro of the server boards or server systems at all. So if you do find any mistakes I'm making, please help me out and tell me what I'm doing wrong in the comment section below and we can all learn something new, okay? Some SATA cables, there is two here and then another four here. We've got some M.2 standoffs, loads of these here, and then stickers for the M.2 pads as well. If you're running the NAND chips only on one side of the SSD, so you put these underneath there, there's a few of these. Then we've got a front panel extension header, so you can put your front panel headers in there and then boom, to the motherboard. We've got the Wi-Fi antenna, which interestingly is not magnetic. And then over here, we have this guy. This is an expansion M.2 card that comes with this motherboard. Looks like a tiny little GPU, but if I open this up, you can already see this underneath over there. There's one, two, three, four M.2 slots. Boom, 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 boom. So basically you can slot that into the motherboard and get extra four slots on your motherboard. 
but because this is a Threadripper system, you're not going to lose any PCI lanes on some of the other things because you've got plenty of PCI lanes. You've got 128 PCI lanes to deal with. So it's plenty to run this, which basically splits the X16 slots into four boom, 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 boom slots and then you'll get full fat x4 bandwidth to each of these pca4 m.2 ssds inside this card okay let's have a look at the motherboard we've got a nice motherboard backplate that protects this uh, which makes the motherboard quite a bit heavier as well here we have the motherboard then there is a lot of things going on here and I'm going to do a little bit differently and we're going to actually start with the IO of the motherboard because this at least makes sense here for us, okay? What we see here is a BIOS flashback button, boom. We have a clear CMOS button. We have Wi-Fi 6, not Wi-Fi 6E. This is Wi-Fi 6, just Bluetooth 2 and Bluetooth 5.2. Then we have some USB ports, okay? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight USB type A ports, and they're all 10 gigabits in speed, boom. Okay, this is the BIOS port if you wanna update the BIOS. We have two 10 gigabit LAN ports, but very important note over here is that this 10 gigabit LAN ports that are on this motherboard, they don't support some of the in the middle bandwidths. So if you are running like a 2.5 gig switch or network, or maybe five gigabit, you have to double check if five gigabit works in there. But I know 2.5 gigabit does not work on this. It only supports one gigabit or 10 gigabit LAN kind of speeds just so you know because i absolutely pulled my hair out last time we built with this pc thought why on earth is this not working it's because i couldn't get the ip address because it doesn't connect to the 2.5 gig even though it's a 10 gigabit port but not all network controllers can support all the in the middle speeds between 1 and 10 gig if that makes sense then we have two USB-C ports, one of them 10 gigabits, and then one of them 20 gigabits per second. So that one is 3.2 Gen 2 X2 slot. We have full fat audio ports there, optical out, and then audio in and outputs there. Pretty powerful IO, I'd say. So first of all, we have the socket here, okay? And this is where you would connect something like this. This is the Threadripper Pro. 5995WX and this costs pretty much more than my life, okay? This is a $7,000 CPU. It's got 64 cores, 128 threads and 128 PCIe Gen 4 lanes, okay? Ridiculous. That guy goes over there. I'm not gonna open this up because it's not as easy. You'll have to unscrew it and we'll do it when we do a build with this one. But the interesting thing is it supports eight channel memory, not dual channel. So like our consumer boards have four, four slots, but dual channel, which means that we have two slots per channel, which means quite a lot of, you know, strange on the integrated memory controller but this one has eight channels so each of these channels is directly connected to the cpu cores which is just loads and loads of memory for the cpu cores now on mainstream we have ddr4 sticks that maximum are 32 gigabytes per channel so in here we would get 256 gigabytes right 128 here and then 128 here but on the server side of things, we have DDR4 modules that are up to 256 gigabytes per stick, okay? So this motherboard actually does support up to two terabytes of RAM, which means that you do have to have 256 gigabytes per each slot. But I'm looking at the QVL list on the actual motherboard site for this motherboard. And there we can see a 128 gigabyte stick from Samsung listed, which is the maximum size. Moving on, let's talk about the power connectors because there's a lot of them, okay? First of all, we've got the 24 pin over here for the motherboard. Then we've got two EPS or CPU power connectors there. 8 pin and 8 pin. Then we have another 8 pin PCIe connector to support power for the onboard PCIe slots there. Then we also have two 6 pin PCIe power connectors here, but they have been folded downwards just because if you put a GPU on the bottom slot over here, for example, I've got a 3090 in here 
if you put it on the bottom slot there it would cover everything there and you wouldn't be able to plug anything in there so that's why a lot of the bottom connectors are like bent downwards so you can actually plug something in even if you have a gpu or something like that connected on the bottom slot there but these pca powers just put power to these slots there as well because up to 75 watts can come from the x16 slots so that's why we need a lot more power to these than just the normal uh, motherboard part there especially if you're running like three four gpus something like that then this fan connectors there's a cpu and cpu optional these two share the fan curves from the bios then we've got another one here three four five six seven this is bent downwards and eight another fan connector down there and all of these are the same wattage 24 watts moving on usb ports we've got a front panel type c which is 10 gigabits front panel type a 5 gigabits then we have two usb 2.0 headers on the bottom there and that's the usb headers for the front panel then there's all sorts of server stuff going on here okay we've got some uh, psu switches to me i've like never seen this but this only makes sense in the server world of things okay for a normal pc guy this doesn't make sense okay there's a psu switch so you can kind of monitor your psu and like what's going on there uh, you need a special uh, kind of connected there we have a bmc switch which basically is the switch for the board management control we have a vga switch which we can switch this vga on or off so basically there is a little video controller on the board somewhere it's probably somewhere down there or i'm not sure where it is exactly that allows you to just see what's going on on the server side of things it's basically like a direct connector to the bios not to the bios really but to the server side of things which is going on on this motherboard this motherboard is firstly like a server and then all the rest of the parts are there and the server is running the motherboard if that makes sense then you've got the ipmi switch this is a location button here and there's location leds as well which are here so basically if this board is mounted in a server rack somewhere and let's say you've got a hundred Threadripper sisters, Threadripper pros in a farm kind of rendering something or all working together whether this is for I don't know like running some service for websites or something like that and then you're in your management system and you see all of these servers and you're know, like oh I see some kind of problem with this one let's say one dim uh, slot is not working properly or one GPU is not working properly or one power cord has come loose and then you're gonna select on your management software and they say okay location press the button which is that location button there you can trigger these leds on your server rack and then see which of these boards this is or where the problem is because if you've got loads of these going on you obviously need to know like where is the problem so this is a location led button and led which is just interesting you've got a debug here you've got an sd card slot in here and this is to save some of the log data from the server side of things on the sd card slot it's a micro sd card slot then we have a com header and then front panel audio header this is the chipset this is the chipset heating over here there is a fan underneath there as well i'm not sure if you can see that there's also q leds to see like the boot priority and what's going on you know where about we are in the booting process like cpu ram vga and then boot we have a debug led there as well but now let's open these m.2 slots to see what's going on underneath here okay there's one full m.2 slot in there and there's another two m.2 slots in here and all of these are pcie gen 4 x4 slots so you can get full fat speed without losing anything the only thing that shares bandwidth with these um m.2s here is that the second and third slot here they share bandwidth with the u.2 slots which are these two and to be honest i don't exactly know what the heck these are and how do you connect them if you want to know find out in the comments maybe someone can explain this but probably you can connect u.2 to another server or to another storage unit or to another u.2 connector basically but whatever is connected here then you will lose the bandwidth of one of the m.2s in in here so this will be disabled then so these are 
connected to these M.2s and they prioritize these U.2 connectors. So basically, if you've got something plugged into both, there's only the U.2s working. If you've got something only on the M.2 slots, then your M.2 slots work there as well. And there is also eight SATA ports here. The top four support RAID configuration, but the bottom ones don't. If you do want to run RAID on the SATA ports there, to run it like as a storage server or something like that, then it only supports RAID for the top four. The bottom ones, you can't run RAID for these. Let's have a look at this card a little bit as well. I'm going to open this card up, this heatsink here. We're going to have to do a few screws. And then boom, this card comes off. As you can see, the heatsink has four thermal pads on it and then so does these thermal pad heat sinks on the motherboard there is a little fan as well that will cool this heat sink this heat sink is interesting because if you look down here you can see that there is a hole in between and this fan will blow the air through as you can see here the air can go through there and then come out from this side here boom to the kind of cool this but they will be running quite cool anyway if you have good airflow there. There is a tiny little fan that's included in here. This does work with any of the other motherboards as well. As long as your motherboard supports splitting your X16 slot into four X4 slots. And here's the end of the twos. Boom, 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 boom. You can slot them in there. In terms of expansion slots, I've mentioned this before. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven X16 PCIe Gen 4 slots. So you could be running a lot, a lot of cards here. If you run the RTX 3090s, these are 2.5 slots, then you can only run two of them. But if you have like PCIe expansion cables, to expand the slot somewhere else, you might be able to run more, but there is a lot, a lot of potential here. If you run some of the uh, Quadro or the new A series cards, which are obviously a little bit skinnier, you might be able to fit three in there. But what I'd love to do is fit three RTX 4090s in here to see if we can do this. Let me know if you want to see that, comment in the section below. But if you do want to build yourself the best bank for Walker Creator PC, you can find the build guide in the description below. There is a build guide for each of your budget. Whatever your budget is, you can configure it. There's four parts in there. Pick the one that's closest to your budget and then you can upgrade and downgrade to your liking to get the best performance for your money. Check it out in the video description below. And if you want to pick up this mother of mothers, then check it out down there as well.